All investors should recognize the importance of a well-diversified stock portfolio because this reduces your level of exposure to a handful of securities, which in turn minimizes the overall risk of your general portfolio. But the question is, how can you go about diversifying your portfolio when you only have a finite amount of cash on hand and you don't necessarily know how to properly analyze a stock? Well, there's really two options here. The first one being watching all the content on my channel where you're gonna learn how to properly analyze analyze financial securities so that you can go about crafting your own diversified portfolio by picking your own stocks. And then number two is going to be what we're about to cover in today's video. Hey, what's going on everyone? I hope you're all having a fantastic day and that your investments are treating you well. My name's Riffin and in today's video, we're gonna be covering a topic that is always highly requested and highly enjoyed on the channel. And honestly, there's a good reason to it. At this point, you already know what's coming because you saw the thumbnail, clicked on the video, and auto smash the like button. So today we're speaking about ETFs, which most of you already know is an acronym for exchange traded funds, which is essentially a basket of financial securities, which seeks to track a certain market or index. Personally here, I hold a variety of different stocks and ETFs in my overall portfolio, pretty much just for some further diversification into certain markets and industries that I'm interested in. But if you're a new investor or you're just an investor who's looking for some passivity with your portfolio, then investing in a handful of really solid ETFs can be a great option to go for because purchasing one share of an ETF can potentially expose you to hundreds, if not thousands of different securities which in turn is going to highly minimize volatile fluctuations in your investments and your portfolio. In fact here, if you're able to continuously invest into ETFs that buy and hold shares of solid companies located mostly, let's say, in developed countries such as Canada, the US, and some European countries, then you can pretty much guarantee that your investment and portfolio is going to rise over time, arguably beating up to 90% of retail investors that pick and choose their own stocks. With that said, you might be thinking here, well, Griffin, we already covered ETFs in the past. I know they're awesome. Why are we doing another video about exchange traded funds here? Simple answer here, there's new things to discover each and every day. And the more you know, the more knowledge you accumulate, well, the more chances are gonna be on your side for higher returns and overall just crafting a portfolio that suits your needs as an investor. And as you're gonna see in today's video, there's ETFs that track different markets, indexes, and overall just industries that might interest you. Now with that said though, I'm not saying here that the ETFs we covered in past content aren't good anymore, they're not relevant. It is quite the opposite. They are phenomenal ETFs that I highly recommend you check into, especially if you're a new investor because these are gonna be ETFs that are known as core ETFs for your portfolio because they're gonna be exposing you to broad markets, especially in Canada and the United States, uh, covering markets and indexes, for example, such as the S&P 500, the TSX 60, and even the NASDAQ 100. A couple of my favorites here that I've done quite well for my portfolio over the past couple of years have been VFV offered by Vanguard Investments, which seeks to track the S&P 500, followed by HXQ offered by Horizons, which is an ETF that seeks to track the NASDAQ 100. And finally, XIU is an ETF offered by iShares, which seeks to track the TSX 60. If you're a new investor who wants some broad exposure to some solid markets and companies, then feel free to take a peek at that other content if you have a chance. So with that said, in today's video, we're gonna be diving into three awesome ETFs that you can add to your portfolio in 2020 for dividend income, further diversification, or even investing in international markets. The point here is to broaden the scope of what is available to us as investors so that you can go about picking different financial securities that fit with your goals. So with that said, let's jump right into the first ETF on today's list. Okay, so you're probably well aware of the fact already that I'm a huge fan of dividend paying companies. And for this reason, we speak quite extensively about specific stock picks on this channel that I think are gonna do well over the coming years based on my own personal research and that also happen to distribute healthy dividends. In the same vein here as my last video, speaking about dividend aristocrats, well, is there a way that you can go about incorporating or putting a lot of these dividend aristocrats all under one roof with one single investment? Well, the answer to that question is quite obviously yes, you can go about incorporating or putting a lot of these dividend aristocrats all under one roof with, you guessed it, an exchange traded fund. 
Now, there are a variety of good Canadian ETFs that are specifically focused towards high dividend distributing companies. However, if you're interested in dividend aristocrats specifically due to their consistent increases in dividend distributions over time, then you're going to want to check out the iShares S&P TSX uh, Dividend Aristocrat Index ETF. Man, that was a mouthful, but this is an ETF that trades under the ticker symbol CDZ, which currently trades in and around $29 per share. So as the name of this ETF would suggest, it invests in high quality Canadian dividend aristocrats, which are companies that have consistently raised their dividend distributions over a minimum of five consecutive years, which if you watched my last video on Canadian dividend aristocrats, you would know that this is the main criteria for being a dividend aristocrat in Canada. The fund currently has around $940 million in net assets under management spread out across 82 different holdings at the time of filming today's video with roughly 50% of these holdings in the financials, energy, and utility sectors, which typically tend to pay out really good dividends. Dividend distributions for CDZ are on a monthly schedule, so if you're looking for some monthly income with your portfolio, this might be a great option for you. And with that, the current dividend yield is hovering right around 3.73%, which is net of the 0.6% management fee. So a dividend yield here of 3.73%, 3% is really awesome, especially considering the fact that with your one holding, you're holding 82 of some of Canada's best companies. Finally, on top of receiving great dividend distributions by holding this ETF, remember that for the most part, the companies that are included in this ETF are well-established Canadian companies with a market cap well above $300 million, meaning that you're going to receive interest growth over time, uh, which in turn is going to have a net positive impact impact on your portfolio. Since inception of this fund, the average annual return has been 6.85% with a cumulative return over the past five years of right around 30%, which is awesome for an ETF. Bottom line here, if you're interested in investing in dividend aristocrats, but don't necessarily want to go about picking and choosing which stocks of the entire dividend aristocrat list that you can find on my website, then CDZ is a great option for you where you're going to have overall diversification of dividend aristocrats in Canada. Moving on now to the second ETF on today's list. This time we're moving overseas. We're going to international markets here with the FTSC Developed All Cap X North America Index ETF Canada Hedge. Once again, that was a huge mouthful, so drop a like just for that. But this is actually an ETF that also trades under the ticker symbol VI, which is currently trading for around $30 per share. And just to quickly clear up that X North America part here, this is an ETF that invests in companies located in developed countries, but excludes entirely companies that are located in North America, so Canada and the United States exclusively. Most of the investments and stocks picks that we do talk about on this channel are focused primarily on Canadian and American companies. However, with this ETF, you're going to be exposed to a variety of different solid companies that are located in developed international markets. And in my opinion, this is extremely important, especially with the world becoming more and more of a global economy. However, if, for example, the Canadian or American markets do take somewhat of a downturn, well, international markets aren't necessarily going to be affected in the same manner. So by holding a variety of different ETFs or stocks that are international, this is just going to further diversify your holdings and therefore maybe minimize the risks of having your portfolio exclusively in North American companies. Do note that unlike an S&P 500 ETF, like for example, VFV, which tracks the 500 largest companies in America, well, VI is an ETF that's gonna track a variety of different companies from different market caps, ranging from large to medium, and even some small market cap companies. This fund is significantly smaller than the last one that we just covered with net assets under management at 100 and $66 million, so quite a bit smaller than $940 million. However, the assets are spread out across 3,727 different companies. Man, just thinking about managing 3,000 companies already gives me a headache. That said, this fund is primarily constructed of companies in the financial, 
consumer goods, healthcare, and industrial sector, with 65% of the overall holdings being in one of those four different industries. The dividend distribution schedule is on a quarterly basis here for VI, even though a lot of these companies are going to be paying out their individual dividends at different sporadic times. However, Vanguard here is going to accumulate all the dividends paid out by the companies and then distribute them back to shareholders such as you and I on a quarterly basis. The current dividend yield of this ETF is hovering right around 2.8%, which is net of the 0.20% management fee. So in my opinion, based on the fact that this isn't an ETF specifically tailored towards high dividend paying assets, well, this is still a pretty good dividend yield. In terms now of the performance of the fund, well, taking into account that this is a relatively newer fund having debuted in December of 2015, the average annualized return since then has been 6.89%. So right where we want to see it for consistent, steady returns over the coming years that are going to be sustainable. And hopefully you're looking at the long term, such as I am anyways, instead of the short term. And this nice and steady 6.89% annualized return over the past five years has led to a cumulative return of 31.69% for this fund, which is quite nice. In my opinion, having a well-diversified portfolio is key to long-term success and investing in developed international markets can be a great way to materialize some returns that aren't in our familiar traditional North American markets such as Canada and the United States. And investing in an ETF for international markets can be a great way to go about doing so if you're not comfortable in investing in specific stocks on an international level. Finally here, VI might not be a core ETF in your portfolio. However, it could very well be a five to 10% holding if you want further diversification and exposure to international markets. So with that said, let's jump right into the third ETF on today's list. And finally, the third and last ETF that I wanna speak about in today's video is constructed of financial securities that aren't as popular on YouTube as for example, traditional dividend stocks. However, I'm a huge fan of these financial securities and I've even made a full standalone video speaking about the top picks for Canada. I'm speaking about a real estate investment trust ETF or REIT ETF for short, which is pretty much gonna be the same thing as any other ETF, bundling up a variety of different financial securities all under one roof. But with the REIT ETF, it's only going to group up real estate investment trusts, which is gonna allow you to have exposure to a variety of different real estate holdings without having to pick and choose your own individual securities. There's a handful of different REIT specific ETFs available in Canada, but the one we're gonna be looking at today is the iShares S&P TSX capped REIT index ETF, also known under the ticker symbol XRE, which currently trades right around 19 to $20. Just like with the dividend aristocrat ETF that we looked at earlier, as an investor, it can sometimes be difficult to pinpoint which securities are best suited for your portfolio. I mean, there's a variety of different REITs and dividend aristocrats available to choose from, but with an ETF such as XRE, for example, you can go about having a variety of different holdings all with your one single holding, which is gonna expose you to every single share or company that is within the fund uh, for a specific market that you're after. XRE currently holds 19 different real estate investment trusts spread across different real estate sectors in Canada, such as, for example, office space, residential, malls, and a variety of others. And every single REIT that we covered in my top REIT pick video are held within this fund. This fund is actually quite large at $1.4 billion in net assets assets under management and the dividend distribution frequency is on a monthly basis which is quite typical of REITs in general and with this the dividend yield as of the last distribution was a whopping 13.96% net of the 0.55% management fee which is just absolutely insane but do keep in mind that the average trailing yield uh, was 4.85% over the past 12 months which is still a really really high dividend yield if that's what you're after. And if you're looking for an ETF that's going to distribute high dividends on a monthly basis, this is a really good option for you. Finally, what type of returns can you expect investing in this REIT ETF? Well, right off the bat, I want to mention the fact
fact that the real estate market here in Canada has been just booming over the past five to 10 years with annualized returns for this fund of around 10.36% with an annualized return of 22% in the past year. Now do take these figures with a grain of salt because no, these types of returns are not going to be sustainable over the long term on an indefinite period of time. However, the Canadian real estate market is currently extremely solid and doesn't necessarily have any signs of slowing down in the coming future. So if you're looking for an ETF that has solid real estate investment trusts, or you're looking to invest in real estate without having to physically purchase real estate, well, this can be a really good option for you for long-term growth as well as a dividend income on a monthly basis. So with everything that we just covered in today's video, what is your opinion on ETFs? Are you bullish on some over others? What are some factors that you take into account when you consider purchasing an ETF? I'd love to know down in the comments. Leave a comment letting me know what you think. And by the way, what do you think the future holds for the three ETFs that we just covered? I hope you enjoyed today's video and if you're interested in learning more about dividend aristocrats and how you can incorporate them into your portfolio, then make sure to check out the video right here that I'm overlaying. And on that note, thanks a lot for watching and I'll see you in the next video.